Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, and we are also seeing you here in the big screen. Yeah, so, so. yeah, I, I opened the talk and I saw a pink screen, so I closed it. So let me see if I, maybe I'll open a, a PDF file. I tried it before and it was working. Okay, we can see your presentation. It's not in the presentation mode. But... Can you see? Yeah, now now, now it's perfect. Oh, okay. Okay, Great. so uh, Teresa Paiva is from Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Teresa is with you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, Vivian. Uh, and thank you, organizers, for uh, inviting me. And I want to start saying that I'm really, really sorry I am not there. I really wanted to be there. But anyway, I could not travel at this point. So uh, what I'll tell you is uh, a work we have been doing recently on uh, thermal power properties. And so let me start by acknowledging my collaborators. So Will Dawani is there in, in Trieste with you. And so if you have any questions, especially the hard ones, you can ask her. I, I'm confident she'll be able to answer. And so we have a group from UFRJ and Marco from the south of Brazil have recently joined us. And we have uh, also collaborated with uh, Ohio State University, specifically Nandini Trivedi has uh, really helped in this work. So uh, the summary of this talk is I'll start uh, talking about um, thermoelectric materials and thermal power, and then I'll turn to the models we have studied, and then the specific uh, CBAC coefficient that we address it here. And uh, we are concerned both with the geometrical effects and with the role of extended correlations and different types of correlations in uh, the CBAC coefficient, and then I'll come to conclusions. So to start uh, simply, the thermoelectric effects uh, are those in which uh, thermic and elect electric energy are joined. So when we have induced voltage in some material and it generates uh, a gradient temperature or the other way around when a temperature gradient induces a voltage. And this has a, a huge set of applications. So to quantify the thermoelectrical uh, effects in a material, usually uh, it, we use the figure of merit, which is an A-dimensional quantity and it's given here uh, in the left, it depends on the CBA coefficient that measures the convention, uh, the conversion efficiency from thermal to electric energy, the conductivity, the electric con conductivity, the thermal conductivity, and the temperature. And here we are also going to look at the power factor that depends only on the CBA coefficient and the conductivity. So in metals, we usually have low uh, CBA coefficient and in insulator, we have low conductivity. So this product here that appears in both the figure of merit and in the power factor is small and we want this to be as large as possible. And so uh, for a long time, uh, doped semiconductors were the best choice. And I will show here some values of the CBA coefficient given here in microvolts per Kelvin. And we see it, the larger ones are around 20. So uh, it's not a very high value. And uh, more recently, uh, correlated materials have been uh, studied in this context and, and have shown large CBA coefficient. Here I'm showing what happens in sodium cobalt oxygen and uh, we have a, a CBAC coefficient that's almost 100 or more than 100, and it's five times larger than the ones in metals. And also in the cuprates, uh, some interesting effects have been observed as a sign change of the CBAC coefficient that happens when we dope uh, the 
the cuprates and it happens at different temperatures depending on the doping. And it happens in, in different materials as shown here. So we are coming to the main questions we want to answer is that are how the thermal power is affected by geometry and how the thermal power is affected by correlations. So we will study the extended Hubbard model. Here I have a cartoon of what's going on. So we have a two-dimensional lattice. We studied different ones. We'll see it in a minute. And we have uh, on-site interactions, U that could be either positive or attractive. And we have included uh, near neighbor interactions V that also can be positive or attractive. And we have only near neighbor hopping. And we'll study this, uh, this model with a chemical potential mu that uh, leads to different densities and we'll study the effect of it all with different uh, densities. So just to stress it out, no analytic solution is known in two dimensions. And so we are going to use Juan de Monte Carlo to study this model on square triangular and honeycomb lattices. Uh, some details on our calculations. For the square lattice, we use it, uh, lattices up to 100 sites. For the triangular one, 144. And for the honeycomb, 162 sites. And uh, we studied different values of the interactions U uh, for the two-dimensional case. And uh, a lot of runs have been done. So it was really a tour de force. Uh, 500 jobs for each temperature we studied because we did sweeps through densities and it will become clear why we had to do that in a while. So the uh, first set of uh, data was published here. In, and in this first section, I, I'm going to discuss just what happens for the regular Herbert model without being extended and only with repulsive interactions. <clears throat> So before uh, looking at what happens in with when we put interactions on, let us first take a look at what goes on when uh, for the non-interacting case. I'm sorry. Uh, so here is the dispersion relations for the three different lattices at t equals zero. And we see the, them all have uh, some Van Hove singularities at different places. And so it's clear that we have particle hole symmetry here for uh, the square and honeycomb, but not for the triangular lattice. And this leads to an interesting behavior when we look at the density as a function of chemical potential. And it's clear uh, that here at half filling, we have this flattening of behavior and it increases as we increase U. So the straight line is just U equals zero. And here are the different colors as we increase uh, the interaction. And we see that we have this uh, horizontal line here at half filling showing that we have a, a mod transition. So as we uh, increased correlations, we see the formation of a, a gap here. And for the square lattice, it's known because of nesting that this mod transition takes place as soon as we turn the interactions on. But for the triangular lattice, studies shown that uh, the critical value of U is between seven and eight. And for the honeycomb lattice, the critical lattice for the critical value of U for the mod transition is around 3.8. So when we look at the entropy, we can extract this uh, by looking at this derivative. Uh, we see uh, that correlations uh, are only relevant around uh, half filling for very low densities. Uh, we have practically the same line with and without interactions. And we see that the mod insulator brings down the entropy at half filling 
and we have like higher uh, entropy in the metal in the vicinity of the mod insulator. We also analyzed uh, the density of states and conductivity. We uh, circumvented the way of obtaining it without doing the inverting Laplace transforms and uh, machine learning is could be really useful to do this uh, inversion here that we have avoided here. So we obtained uh, the density of states through the compressibility and we obtained the conductivity by looking at current current correlation functions. And this is what we found. So obviously we see as we increase you a sign of the uh, mod insulator at half filling as shown here for the different lattices, both at the density of states and also in the conductivity. And once again, the non-symmetric, non-particle hole symmetry of the triangular lattice is evident here. So let's go to the z back coefficient. That's what we really want to look into. So uh, we obtain it within the Kelvin formula and the sign of the Ziba coefficient is related to the carrier. So it's negative for electrons and positive for holes. And here we see what happens in the non-interacting case. So we see just the effect of geometry. We see that for the square lattice, we have one sign change at half filling, which is when we turn from electrons to holes. For the triangular lattice, this is moved away from half filling at this uh, 1.42 density. And for the honeycomb lattice, we see different uh, sign changes here at, at different densities. And when we increase, uh, we turn on the interactions as we see here, we see this uh, strong increase uh, at half filling in the triangular lattice, we see uh, clearly the sign of the mod transition with this increase uh, and, and changing sign around half filling that we didn't have before. And we have this additional sign change densities. So for uh, the non-interacting case, we only saw a sign change at half filling. And here we have this at the square lattice, uh, a piece uh, around very close to half filling, either uh, below or above, where we have a sign change. So uh, what's going on in there? We find uh, some very interesting uh, results at, at the different densities. First, uh, we see here that for the non-interacting case, which is this uh, black line uh, above half filling, we have a negative value of the z coefficient and turning on interactions lead to a positive value. So we see that the interactions can lead to a change in sign on from electrons to holes in this, uh, in this uh, geometry. And also we see this large, uh, enhance of the z coefficient close to half filling. And we have a number of crossings here from negative to positive on U dependent values. For the honeycomb lattice, we see uh, 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 this behavior as well that we can turn from uh, holes into electrons with uh, increasing correlations. And I'm only showing part here of the densities, we have particle hole symmetry. So above half filling, we'll see uh, holes turning into electrons within the symmetric densities. We also see this fast increase here close to half filling. And we see that the values of U for which we have these crossings uh, approach half filling as we increase U. And one thing that we also analyzed is the effect of temperature. So uh, we see here that as we decrease the temperature, this enhancement close to half filling is stronger. And we have some very interesting points. All these lines cross more or less on the same place. And so we have some temperature independent densities around 0.5 and 1.5. 
And we found that they have this interesting uh, name, mesosbestic points, where all the lines cross. And so if we look at the z coefficient as a function of temperature for different densities, we have that at half filling, it's always zero, but we have this uh, densities here where we almost have a straight line and, and no temperature dependence. So uh, this uh, change of sign here, without the interactions, we would have uh, everything that is above half filling having a positive Seebeck coefficient. And, and as we introduce correlations, we see that we have this narrow region here that's temperature dependent, but where uh, the Seebeck coefficient uh, turns negative. And we want to understand better what's going on. As I mentioned before, we have uh, positive carriers turning into negative carriers. And this is only because this can only happen if we have a Fermi surface reconstruction. So what happens here is that in this region, we have a whole like Fermi surface. And in this re small region here, we have a negative uh, uh, and ele electron-like Fermi surface. And this is something that has been observed before, both in experiment and in theory. So uh, it's known that the Hubbard model and also for cuprates, we have a, a Luttinger theorem breaking and we have a, a, a region here where the Fermi surface reconstructs. So just to look into the power factor, and uh, as I have told before, it's the, the product of the z coefficient square and uh, the conductivity. And what we see here, uh, we have seen them both separately and they don't peak at the same point. So we have kind of a competition between these two contributions. Uh, we can see that uh, for half filling and for the honeycomb, honeycomb, honeycomb lattice, we have an increase of the power factor in the vicinity of half filling. And uh, it can be tuned by interactions. I think the most interesting case is the triangular lattice. The straight line, the black straight line is u equals zero. So if we turn the interactions on here, we see that we move this peak to different densities. So we can move the density at which the power factor is larger by tuning the interactions. And we have here uh, around 0.4 to 0.6, this region, uh, an increase on, in the power factor that is uh, due to uh, correlations and is strongly dependent on geometry. So uh, let us now look into the extended Hubbard model and what happens when we have interactions that go beyond uh, on-site interactions. So just to recall, we have uh, the on-site interaction here that can be uh, positive as in the lower panel or negative and attractive interaction in the on-site interaction here as in the upper panel. And we have analyzed different values of the next neighbor interaction, uh, the nearest neighbor interaction V. So uh, here is the density as a function of the chemical potential. And we see here uh, in this case, oops, sorry, this is the wrong order. But uh, just to emphasize that this uh, part of the work where we look into the longer range interactions and the negative sign U is still under construction. But here, uh, what we see is that when we don't have a gap here, as shown in the, in the attractive case without V, this darker uh, curve here, we don't see an increase in the Seebeck coefficient. So when we don't have a gap, we don't see the Seebeck anomaly. They are uh, closely connected. And here, uh, 
on the repulsive case, we see that increasing uh, V increases this gap here and helps us to have a, a larger anomaly. And so what is going on here, uh, we see that uh, for larger V, we also have kind of a, a, a knee here around uh, quarter filling that also leads to a small peak here uh, in the Seebeck coefficient. So this uh, changes in behavior and this gaps that appear in here are strongly connected to the peaks in the Seebeck coefficient. If we look at the phase diagram of the extended Herbert model, so this is uh, Sebastian's, uh, another a student from the group uh, work. So this is what happens at half filling and this is what happens at quarter filling. So uh, here, when we are in this region of the S wave uh, superconductor, we see no enhancement in the Seebeck coefficient. And when we are in the CDW, when we have a charge density wave uh, region, we have a large mod gap here, and we see uh, an enhancement of the Z-back coefficient. And here, uh, when we have uh, in when we are in the antiferromagnetic phase. Here we see uh, that we have uh, this mod gap and this mod gap leads to an enhancement in the Z-back coefficient. And this enhancement uh, can be increased as we increase V as we see here. And what's interesting is when we are at quarter filling and in the charge density wave, we see this little knee here that we would need to reduce the temperature even further to observe, uh, but we see an enhancement in the z back coefficient here. And it's very interesting because it changes the sign of the z back coefficient. So uh, we are changing from an electron to a whole carrier here within the charge density wave phase. So this is uh, also uh, happening here. And within the metallic phase, we don't see this, this behavior here. So uh, I come to the conclusions. Uh, we have uh, an anomalous Seebeck effect near half filling we have uh, a changing sign that the signal is, signals uh, a Fermi surface reconstruction. Uh, we have this anomaly is intensified by temperature reduction and by the increase in correlations. The anomalous Seebeck is directly related to the presence of a mod gap or uh, a charge density wave gap and the thermoelectric power factor displays the competition between the Seebeck coefficient and the conductivity. And so I want to thank the, you for your attention and uh, those who have funded the research. And it looks like I have rushed a lot during my presentation, but uh, that's it. I'm open for questions. Okay, so thank you, Teresa. Are there questions? Uh, thanks, Teresa, for the uh, these nice results, showing us these nice results. I just have a curiosity about the uh, more the methodological aspects of the simulation. So you show a lot of results away from the how feeling and uh, using quantum Monte Carlo. So. The sign problem here is something that you have under control, or you 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 um, use some tricks to uh, mitigate the the sign problems. Uh. Yeah, so something strange here. All the cameras are off. I I don't understand. Let me try to see you. Okay, I I can you hear me? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, I, I well, anyway, uh, the sign problem is under control, sort of. So what we do, we don't go to very low temperatures. And uh, as I have shown, we do a lot of simulations to increase statistics. And so uh, we are constrained by that. So not going to very low temperatures and, and doing a lot of statistics to increase uh, the quality of the data at the, the densities where the, the sign was worse. I see, yeah, thanks, thanks, Elisa. We have one more question, just a minute. Thanks, Teresa. Really great talk. Um, sorry you didn't make it here, but uh, the uh, I had a maybe two part question. So one is that your Seebeck anomaly, where you're getting these really large Seebeck coefficients, I would have thought at finite temperature that gets rounded out. Is that wrong, or uh, is the height of those divergences controlled by how low you can get in temperature? Uh, yes. So if I, oh, now I can see again. Hi, Kaden. Can you? Yeah, your slides are pulling up, it looks like, right now. Yeah, they are all black to me. They're all black but, here as well. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Let me try to stop sharing it and weird. You can always use a marker on your wall behind you. Can you see it again? Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, so I think I have unlearned how to give Zoom talks after the pandemics. And, oh, it's all black again. It just disappeared again. Yeah, that's weird. Let me put it on the, the slide I want to show you and then I'll, I'll share because it looks like it's... Yay, can you see now? Yes. So uh, as you can see here, this is one where we show uh, temperature effects. It's for u over t equals 10, so uh, strong correlations. And as you see here, uh, so we start this um, high temperature here, the orange curve, we almost see uh, no effect. And as we decrease the temperature, we see that the peak increases and gets closer and closer to half filling. So uh, the effect of temperature is both increasing this anomalous effect and also uh, squeezing it towards half filling. Interesting. Yeah, this was exactly what I was wanting to see. And if I can ask the second part of the question. Um, so should I think about this Seebeck anomaly near the Mott uh, transition? It's sort of like having holes in the lower Hubbard band and then I have particles filling the upper Hubbard band. Is this the right picture? Or? Yeah, it is. Uh, let me see if I have this. Um, so it's all pink to me. This is very, very weird. Can you see this? All pink here. <laughs> yeah, this is very weird. So, uh, but this is uh, due to this uh, uh, Fermi, the Luttinger breaking uh, effect. So if we have a non-interacting metal and we reduce the number of carriers, we see this uh, 
reducing of the Fermi surface. And here on the presence of correlations, we see something completely different. So uh, what I think is going on is very close to half filling. We have this background of uh, local moments on each side. And, and when we are above half filling, it's like we are adding holes to it. So we, we, are, uh, we see our world as if uh, we are uh, looking into this local moments. And at, as we pull uh, electrons off these local moments, or we add electrons to these local moments. And so this is what it makes it look like. We have uh, holes above half filling and um, and electrons below have filling. Does it make sense to you uh, what I'm trying to say? I thought I had a cartoon here, but I don't. So it's as if we are looking into a background of local moments and adding and removing local moments from half filling. And this is why uh, we have this uh, anomalous behavior. Okay, so I don't see any further questions. So let's thanks Teresa again. So thank you. And I think we go for the final remarks with the organizers now, right?